there, my name is Murray with my co-host Corey. We are The Real Guys and this is The Real Show with two ears. Today we're embarking on a crown jewel style adventure. As always, I'm coming with my co-host Corey. How are you doing today, Corey? I am doing very well today, thank you. And as always, you can catch us on Amazon, Spotify, Google Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts, iTunes, we're there. You can also catch our video version of this uh, program on YouTube dot com slash the real show the real show real with two e's show nice and there we have it what are we reviewing today Corey we are reviewing uh, WWE's latest pay per view yeah or premium live event yes what do you feel about that what do you feel about that I mean I, I don't know Vince I think gone. it's a bit of a mouthful Vince is gone so I, I'm, I'm just gonna call it pay per view again yeah me too I never stopped calling it pay per view <laughs> to be honest I feel like Premium Live Event is a very contrived name. It's a bit too much of a mouthful. Yeah. And PLE are three letters which don't really work as an initialism. Yeah. But I've got a crown jewel. Crown jewel. A, 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 ple- a plea. Or a pfff. It's a pay-per-view emanating from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Correct. It's our we- yearly venture into Yeah, well, it's, uh, for the next, what, five, how many years do we have left on the deal? Yeah, something like that. Not five years, four years, something like that. Yeah. I think up till 2029. Yeah, so they've got a 10-year deal with... WWE have made a 10-year deal with Saudi, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Yes. And there was a bit of controversy surrounding... There's always controversy surrounding the Saudi Arabia pay-per-views before we even get to the card. There's always controversy surrounding the Saudi Arabia pay-per-views, not only because they're held in Saudi Arabia, a company... Um, country. A country, sorry, not a company. A country foremost known for its human rights abuses and its, its murdering of journalists and the scrutiny of which the world is held under for these acts, their brutal treatment of not only homosexuals, but also uh, dissidents and uh, critics of the Saudi Arabian government. This was under particular spotlight uh, on the date of Crown Jewel as the Saudi Arabian government had uh, told the USA yep. that they were expecting an imminent attack from Iran Yes, because of public unrest, I believe, in the Iranian capital over yeah. the murder of a, a young woman. So to to obviously deflect from this, uh, pro- to deflect from the protests in Iran, they have decided to uh, attack Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Including, apparently, the capital. Which I know, I know we're suddenly turning into world politics on The Real Show, <laughs> but this is all relevant, right, Corey? <laughs> what did you know of this situation? I didn't know much, to be fair. Uh, over when they told it was going to happen, it's potentially going to happen. Uh, and the the White House published a statement saying that they will defend their yes. interests in the Middle East yeah. uh, if attacked, and they will uh, stand with Saudi Arabia. Many people were wondering why would the U.S. government stand with a brutal dictatorship? Well, Saudi Arabia provides the USA a lot of things, including a lot of information about the Middle East, yes. which they wouldn't really want to jeopardize yes. their relationship with. So, one thing I was certain of though is that this PLE or PPV would not be cancelled. No. Was going to go show, ahead. WWE has very much taken on the <laughs> the motto of the show must go on. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. No matter what is happening, the the pay-per-view must happen, right? They put a lot of build into it. They do a lot of work towards it. Every time this time of year, they always talk about Crown Jewel, da-da-da-da, Greatest Royal Rumble. Yeah. But this time, under threat of an imminent attack... They decide to, oh, right, do it anyway. They all, they all, all the superstars fly out there Tuesday, yep. and it happened Saturday afternoon for us because we're in the UK. We yes. are so there a few hours ahead. They're there at eight o'clock. Is our six o'clock? So we're yes. able to sit down with our tea and watch exactly. this. Exactly for one time a year, we can watch. Yeah, the one time a year, maybe at a reasonable time. Yeah. Six. Don't have to stay up until one a.m. in the morning, <laughs> yeah. three a.m. in the morning, for us to sit there and watch four hours of wrestling. Yes. Until five a.m., six a.m. Right. Yeah. Finally, a decent, a decent time for us. But it's a shame it comes at such a cost. Anyway, the card, beginning with our first match, yes. we start off strong, we start off hot. Yeah. Who do we have? Brock Lesnar. The Beast. Yes. Brock Lesnar versus... Bobby Lashley. The all, almighty Bobby yes. Lashley. Okay, just, I always say this about Bobby Lashley. I don't think I've mentioned it before, perhaps, on the real show. The, the words almighty are two separate words for WWE. Mm. All and mighty. Not the word almighty, which is one word. Like, you know, power of God, almighty. They say almighty. Like, all of him is mighty. Yeah. Not just almighty, Bobby Lashley. Almighty. Look at him. He's almighty. Look at him. He's a big man. He's almighty. He's a big man. He's almighty. He does, like, 50 lunges a day or something. Does he? Lunges. I've not watched that shameless workout video <laughs> where he does... <laughs> what I watched. Where he does, like, 200... <laughs> 150,000 rip curls. Yeah. 200 crunches a day. His warm-up is... 
I think it was about 100 lunges and like five minutes, or six like minutes it. of wall sits. Oh my goodness, I can't do one minute of wall sits. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby, you're killing me, Bobby. That's his warm up. Well, Bobby, yeah. as, as Brock Lesnar says, yes. Bobby, yeah. Bobby, Bobby, come here, Bobby. Yeah, that was his warm up. The, the, the build to this was effectively, let's see these big men have a fist fight. For the second time. For the second time. Yeah. There was a lot of build to the singles match between Brock and Bobby for a while. Yes. And how they execute that in Saudi Arabia is as, as follows. Obviously, Brock is very known for his tendency to yep. start the show because he likes to leave early. Yeah. Most likely, as the people were still going on, Brock was in the air. Probably. He probably caught his jet immediately after the match. Yeah. And scarped out of Saudi Arabia along with Bobby. Or Bobby. <laughs> but... <laughs> Someone made a complaint. You see, there's a complaint of that on Twitter or something. I when Brock's that. cutting a promo, and every time he says, Bobby, 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 <laughs> like that. Match starts out, Bob Bobby is in a lot of control. He's attacking Brock's leg. Yep. He's hitting him through that. They, th they go hard straight away. As I like to say, if you're going to go hard, go hard straight away. Go hard through the barricade, to the apron, to the ring post, to the steps. He's, Bob, Bobby is throwing Brock around the ring. He's throwing him into step. He's hurting his knee. He's hurting his leg. They get in. Uh, Brock finally manages to mount some offense. Yes. Hits some quick strikes. Gets him up for the F5. Boom. Normally one F5. That's it. Enough to put Kofi Kingston away in eight seconds. Yep. Not enough to put Bobby Lashley away no. after Brock's been injured with his leg. So Bobby kicks out of the F5. I'm thinking, I'm thinking in my head at this point, Brock's probably going to win. Yeah. But how's it going to be done? Yeah. I think Brock's going to do, you know, maybe two F5s, one off the rope, maybe yeah. three... You know, take a style. One on the turnbuckle, One on the turnbuckle, perhaps. Uh, maybe a bit of a ref bump, I don't know. 20 suplexes. Yeah, t t hit loads of 20,000 <laughs> German suplexes, yeah. Corey. He hits about, I don't know, three maybe German yeah. suplexes. Suplex City on uh, Bobby Lashley. Bobby, however, he's, he's, he's stumbling up from the suplexes. He manages to catch Lesnar with the full Nelson, with yes. the, the Lashley lock or the hurt, hurt lock, lock, whatever he calls it. Or right? the, the master lock. Yep. Chris Masters, the master lock, gets him in that, and Brock is Brock's fading. He's, he's he doesn't want to submit, but he's going out. Yeah, he's trying to uh, he's trying to get escape. I think he does escape at one point, but then yeah. Lashley just gets him back in it anyway, because you would, would you? Yes. Wouldn't you? Gets him back in it. They're struggling. Oh, he can't reach the rope. He can't reach the rope. But then he he, he jumps back, falls yeah. back, does like a backslide almost, slides up Bobby's body. Bobby's thick chest is too much of a disadvantage to yeah. him. He's weighing him down. Weighs him down. The ref goes in. One, yep. two, three. Brock wins in about what? Ten minutes? Six probably minutes. Less. Six minutes. Six minutes. Yeah. Brock pulls the... Uh, sneak, sneak victory. The Bret Hart. The Bret Hart. Which, one thing about the spot, right? I've seen it a couple times. Obviously, Bret Hart's done it. Uh, I have a DVD of like a local wrestling show where a guy called Chris Travis does it. He's not alive anymore. RIP. But he does it. Um... One thing I don't get. First off, fair play is a complete curveball than Brock just winning with it with an F5. Yes. I don't mind it. However, if you can get to the turnbuckle, can't you just put your foot on a rope and get a rope break instead? Normally, normally <laughs> the rule of the Brock match is finish a spam. Yeah, is good. Yeah, German it, suplex, German suplex, F5, 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 F5 it, one, two, three. This is weird because it's, this is like it's just a technical finish. Which is, I'm outsmarting you now. Yeah, but it's Brock Lesnar. It's Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Brock Lesnar, who doesn't really do that. Brock Lesnar, who is the, you know, just sock the guy I and give him a big move. I don't mind it, though. Just do it, a slam. Because it does make Bobby look strong, because Brock had to revert right. to not winning by demolishing him. Yes. He had to try and think of something else. Um, and at the end, you see Bobby Lashley put him back in the lock again. Yes, he does. He puts him back in the afterwards. So he still Brock looks, sells it. Brock yeah. sells it. Fair, fair play to him. And, and Bobby is now heel. Bobby is now yeah. still heel. And, um, it's a weird and interesting... End. Shall we give it a rating? I'm gonna go a six. I quite liked it. Oh, okay. I'm, no, all right. I'm just gonna say that this wasn't your typical. This was a typical Brock match up yeah. until the finish. Yeah. I'm and gonna, I was just a bit confused. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Go I'm gonna for go a, a six. seven. Seven. Okay. Um. Also, potentially, can we see the hurt business come back? Bobby wants it. Bobby, Bobby has wants said. It. Bobby said that until I am dead, yeah. I will work. I will work to reform yeah. the hurt business. Yeah. 
He, Bobby said, I will not stop until the Hurt Business is together again, yeah. somehow. Come on, do it. And he's got, I mean, M- MVP's been written off TV by Braun. Yep. He could come back with Bobby. Yep. Uh, Cedric's not doing much. Shelton's come back now. Yeah, Shelton just lost against Dominic, I think. Dominic Mysterio, yep. Yeah. Uh, he also lost about, I think, a week ago against someone else. Yeah. So, there's reason to bring them, to pull them back. There's reason to pull them all back. There is. And it could be done. It could easily be done. Yeah. Especially by a man with as much power as Bobby Lashley. 100%. The aftermath of this slightly is Bobby was kind of involved with Mustafa Ali yeah. in a feud against Seth Rollins. Mustafa yeah. is still feuding with Seth. I think the last thing Bobby was doing was... I've not, I don't think he's, I think he's been off TV for a week or so. Yeah. Uh, and then the next match yes. is Alexa Bliss and Oscar. We see an interview backstage. Byron Saxton is with Alexa Bliss and Oscar. Yes. Current, to, um, current tag team champions. Yeah, they're current women tag team champions as of this pay per view. Yeah. And spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Byron's like, "How do you feel? Like, how do you feel going into the match?" Da da da. And as Alexa is talking, the Wyatt Six logo appears yeah. on the screen. Do you remember this? It does. Yeah. There was a bit of a freak out in the arena. People are recognizing it. The even though I give it, I give it to the to the Saudi Arabia fans. This pay per view was hot. Yeah. They don't get a pay per view this side of the world very often in the Middle East. So this is good to see the fans are really into it, right? Yeah. Especially with the, the next few, the next couple matches, they were into it. Alexa says, yeah, we're going to defeat Dam- Dakota Kai and Sky of Damage Control. Yep. But as she's talking, the White Six logo flashes up and she's distracted while Oscar is speaking, just for that second. So a little tease, perhaps, maybe in the maybe. future, of Alexa. She wants to do it. She thinks the character was really good and she wants to come back to that supernatural character. Possible. It's a possibility. The match itself was a very good women's tag team match for yeah. the championships. Even though I always hate the fact... This is like... My issue with many women's matches in Saudi Arabia is the body suits. Yeah, I just well. feel like they look stupid. Some people make them work, some people do not. Yeah. There are two women on this show that made it work. And I will, I will save them for later because there were no one in this match. They look like Power Rangers. Yeah. Dakota and Neo look like Power Rangers. And Alexa and... They look like they were wearing bed sheets. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean... It's one of those. Things. I'm not dashing them. They're all good-looking women. Yeah, and uh, they're all they're all amazingly technical wrestlers. Dakota Kai is fantastic. Io is probably the, one of the best in the world, if not the best female wrestler ever. And uh, so is Oscar as well, uh, including Alexa. Alexa's really uh, made her shine in the last few years, especially with her championship runs and all of her prestige. It's it's just an unfortunate circumstance. It's very physically jarring, is what I'm going to say. It's where you yeah. look at it and you go, something's wrong here. Why don't they have the legs out? Yeah. No, I'm I'm not saying I don't want to get cancelled. I don't want to get cancelled. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just yeah, saying. When I, when I see a man in a body, so I'm thinking that as well. Yeah. Like gold dust. I think why don't you show your legs, man? <laughs> when MVP, I think got MVP. I'm sure you've got wonderful legs. Why don't you just get them out? His get legs, them out. His legs are out. Show your legs, mate. Show I your legs. MVP's legs are out. Okay. Um, but uh, the match itself. The match itself. Yes. Uh, uh, there was a lot of back and forth between the teams. Yeah. There was a great spot where uh, Dakota was going for a big kick. Yep. They're going for a Kyle kick in the corner, and Alexa like does out the way, and Dakota's Dakota's leg just goes straight up onto the rope. I thought that was fun. It was a pretty decent match. I mean, it's mm. the second match in the card. It was a very, what do you think of the action? I thought it was. I thought it was good. I thought it was pretty nice. It's one of those things where you've just had you've just had Brock and Bobby. Yeah. You kind of want not like a cool down match, but you. It's a nice kind of transition to, kind of the next match, which we'll get onto, which is a, a gimmick match. So you kind of want something a bit, not as aggressive. Normally, a tag team match is pretty much your yeah. recipe for that, and these they brought it. They really did bring it. I felt like this was a, this was a very fun match. A lot yep. of good spots. A lot of good work with Oscar and. Again. Uh huh. And we might differ on this, like we did with the Rock and Bobby thing. The ending to this is the only thing I don't like. I like the ending. See, I don't. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> this is the ending. I think Oscar had EO in the Oscar lock. Yes. And EO did submit. Yeah. But she, they didn't see it. Yeah. So Alexa, the ref didn't see it. So Alexa goes up to the turnbuckle to hit the Twisted Bliss. Yeah. She's take, pushed off by Nikki Cross. Yep. Who was recently reverted from her Nikki ASH superhero yes. gimmick into her crazy NXT yep. uh, sister of insanity gimmick? Turning back to it's about like the no other member of sanity is there. But nope. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, Alexander Wolf. But yeah. 
she's back in her she's back in her twisted sister gimmick. She pushes Alexa off the turnbuckle. Then I think Eo goes for the moon Eo does the moonsault on Oscar and Pinza. Yeah. Oh no, it's like Eo does the moonsault on, on Alexa and Pinza. Yes. Because I think Dakota gets Dakota gets Oscar out of the ring. Yeah. Then you get the one, two, three, and you yep. have new women's tag team champions. They those they've hot potatoed those belts so much. I'm sorry, this is my yeah. criticism, right? Again, a really good match. Love all the women in this match, um, especially Dakota and Eo, but they hot potato those belts so much they feel like they don't matter anymore. Yeah, see, that's why I don't like the ending. Right. Because you don't, you didn't need Alexa and Asuka to be champions for you the whole me, Nikki who, Cross Who work. are Dakota and Eo going to defend against now? I don't know. <laughs> who? I don't know. Uh, Asuka and Alexa are probably going to be ending probably by war games if yeah. what happens happens. There's no other relevant. Aaliyah is injured. Yep. Raquel is with Shotzi, but they've already had a shot and they lost. The thing is, it would it would have been it would have still made sense if Alaska uh, Alaska Alexa Alaska and As- Bliss. Yeah, if Alexa and Oscar were going to win the belts and then they were cost the belts rather than winning the belts and then losing them straight away. Five days. Yeah. Five like, days they, they had those belts I for. I don't get why they lost them. Because they won on the Raw main event before yeah. Crown Jewel, and they had five days as champions, and they lost them again. Because also, this doesn't help Damage Control, who have now lost the belt. <laughs> lost the belts. <laughs> for no reason. And now won the belts again. Yeah. But they won the belts because someone interfered. <laughs> yes. So, Damage Control. I, right, despite the right, I'm not going to rate this on the... I'm going to... On the circumstances of the match, and the yeah. championship involved in the match, I will not rate it on. But I did like the finish with Nikki. Uh, it keeps... Alexa and Oscar with roundabout enough for a rematch, but after this, just please end it. Yeah. Just have them retain and doesn't matter. Move on. Move yeah. on, please. The women's from the women's tag team championships have gone from such Bailey, Sasha Banks, yeah. the iconics. When did they drop? I asked this to someone else, I asked this to a friend recently, when do you think they dropped? And they looked at me and they said, Oscar sorry not Oscar and uh Nyra and Shayna. Yeah. Is when they dropped. I was thinking Nia, but I can't remember who she was with. It was Nia and Shane when they yeah. dropped. Because they started to whack them on odd couples, and that is something you should not do. They started to, Sometimes an odd couple tag team does work, but you do it again and again and again, it yeah. doesn't work. They just whack them on odd couples again and again and again. They whack them on Rhea and Nikki. Yeah, it's, it's very rare that it, it works out with anyone. They whack them on Zelina and Carmella. Yeah. They, can't, they hold them until WrestleMania. Yeah. Then they were on Sasha and Naomi, and that didn't help very much, because what happened there? <laughs> Something we can't get into on this show, because it would take us too long. Yeah. I don't know. It's it, they, they didn't need to lose the belts in the first place. I don't get it. I hope... I right, but for the match itself, I'll give it... 7.5. 7. 7. Number 7 from me. Okay, 7.5. The next match... Yes. It's... Is it Drew McIntyre? Correct. It's Drew McIntyre. The Scottish warrior, the Scottish warrior, yes. the Scottish psychopath yes. against Gary and Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux, his wife. Correct. Now, this is the point. Just going to mention, Scarlett makes the bodysuit work. Yeah. I'm just going to put that there. Yeah. She does because she, she always wears that kind of stuff. Yeah. She wears she wore in NXT all the time. So she makes it work. It's just like another Scarlett outfit. Yeah. Lovely. Cross himself, he's, he's better looking with hair. I'm half and half. Really? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm 100% hair. I'm half and half. He has to look. He looks, he looks like a thumb when he's bald. Coming, coming from a guy with very short hair. Right. Uh, I'm, well, you're not bald, though. No. The only reason why I'm half and half is because the reason why he had his hair cut wasn't because he thought it looked better. It was because he thought that the character of Karen Cross wouldn't care for hair, so he'd just shave it off because it's easier. Mm. There's nothing to deal with. And I like that as a character thing mm. of he doesn't need it. And it, it's, it just... Cuts it off, yeah. done, dealt with, doesn't do anything with it. And I like that. Um, that he's so razor focused on yeah. on but, his yeah. goals that he just doesn't need hair. So I don't know, I'm half and half. And now he has hair. He does now have hair, yes. Maybe he's going to grow it out. I don't think he'll grow it out. No, I don't think he will grow it out. It's fine how it is. I he sticks it back, it looks cool. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I think can't. it frames his. My only issue is, I think it frames his face better. When he's bald, he looks a bit like an egg. Yeah. And I don't really like egghead look on people. <laughs> Especially a handsome man like Cross, you know. And I feel like Cross with hair, he frames his face much better. He can slick it back. It looks cool at live shows. You know, it gets all messy. He looks he looks he looks really sweet, I think. And Scarlet is just 
you know, go dynamite. So it doesn't matter what you do with her. She could be wearing, she could be wearing a lampshade. It doesn't matter. She's Scarlet Bordeaux. The match itself, yeah, it's a cage match. It is because Cross is, keeps attacking McIntyre from behind. Yes. Cross keeps jumping him. McIntyre was enraged after the strap match went awry and he lost, so he decided to brutalize Cross in a car crash. Yep. Uh, jump his arm, attack his arm, uh, break break limbs. Then McIntyre says, I'm going to have it somewhere where you can't run away in a steel cage match. Yes. And WWE steel cage matches are, they've changed them slightly. It's not just escape the cage now. It's either the pinfall submission in the cage yep. or escape the cage. Yes. And th they went with the escape the cage option. There's a lot of outside interference from Scarlett here. Yep. Well, she's she's a standing, around the, standing around the cage, shouting. <laughs> Laughing and yeah. cackling and whatnot. Right, Jezebel, as Jim Ross would say. Then we have Cross and McIntyre engaged in action in the ring. They're throwing each other around, coming off the ropes. McIntyre's looking for that Claymore kick. Yep. But every time Cross seems to be finding a way out of it or dodging a way out of it somehow. The the big uh, tumult of the match was is when they're climbing up the cage, Cross... Uh, Gives the winner the ref. The ref has locked the cage with the, the key. Yes. And Drew is trying to escape, so he goes to get. He goes to open the cage door from the from the outside. Yep. Sorry, from the inside. Opens the cage door. Scarlet gives him the the pepper spray again. Yep. Pepper sprays, and then she pepper sprays the ref. Don't know that was a DQ for Cross. <laughs> it's, 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 His wife's pepper sprayed a ref. Yeah, it's no DQ. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, cage match <laughs> would be no DQ. Yeah. It doesn't matter. She she should have at that point probably maybe been you know told to leave. Yes. But. No, she was not ejected. No, she wasn't ejected. They, she, he, gonna she, sprays, she sprays the, the ref. Yep. Ref goes down. She gets the key. Yeah. She locks the door on McIntyre. So McIntyre can't leave. Yes. But then McIntyre says, oh, I'll just climb the cage then. Yeah. Uh, I think he hits... Uh, by the way, Mac Drew McIntyre has never won a match with the Future Stock DDT. <laughs> just saying. I don't know why he does it. <laughs> you don't win with it. Yeah. Every time he hits the Future Shock DDT and goes in for the pin, he never wins with it. So yeah. why keep doing it? Is that the signature move? You're not Jake the Snake. You can't be... Also, by the way, I just want to mention that Jake the Snake tweeted, by the way, good, um, a good thing, that he was off oxygen and he was ready to come back to AEW. Yep. And his health, his health matters are sort of revol resolving themselves. So best of, you know, best health to you, Jake. More power to you. I'm a big fan of Jake the Snake. But his Twitter handle is Jake... Jake the Snake DDT. Yes. Because he goes on about how his DDT is the best. Because he always wins. He always won with it. Back in the day where a DDT was a match ending move. Yeah. And not, you know, a one count. Or a transitional move. Or a move that I've seen Penta El Cerro Miedo flip out of for some reason. I watched the latest... So I'm just going to mention that Dante Martin hits, hits Penta with a DDT. And Penta just flops right up back up to, back to his feet. Was there no impact there? Did did Penta's head not hit the ground? I, I don't know. Back to back to the match though. <laughs> Drew's climbing the cage. Yep. Cross says, "Crap!" Open the door. Yeah. Scarlet opens the door. <laughs> opens the door with the keys. And I, for a second, I thought, if those keys don't work, they've botched the spot here. Yes. If Scarlet cannot successfully open the door, they've botched the spot. But they didn't botch the spot. No. Sure, but it's not a shark cage scenario. They open the door. And Cross is climbing, Cross is getting out, but Drew hits the floor just a second before Cross does. And I like that, because that keeps Cross as if Drew was any slower, Cross would have won. Yeah. And I, I like that it's almost photo finish level. I'm going to give this an 8. 7.5. Okay. You're going up very slowly, Corey. Yeah. Very slowly. Yeah. The fourth match on this card was the OC, the, form, the, the team of AJ Styles... Uh, Gallows and Anderson, the OC. The OC returned to Monday Night Raw to combat the Judgment Day because AJ Styles was having trouble with Finn Balor. Finn Balor was uh, aggravating and uh, accosting AJ, wanting him to join the Judgment Day. Correct. But AJ wasn't having it. And AJ nope. said, I've brought some backup to take down you, da Damian and Dominic. I've brought the OC. And the OC arrived, Gallows and Anderson. Then they get their butt kicked for about three weeks. Yep. Uh, by Rhea, they lose matches to Damien. They uh, get pu punched in the yam bags. They get punched right in the yam bags, as Taz would say. They get Gallo's got body slammed by Rhea, which was awesome because what he's what six foot yeah six foot seven six foot eight 
300 pounds, Ridge holds him up there like it's nothing, vertical body slams him. Pff, my goodness, he's amazing. It's why I'm wearing a t-shirt. I'm just gonna say. I wore I wore appropriate merch for today. Corey did not. You wear the same merch every single time you cover a wrestling shirt. No, I just wear a rear shirt. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's not that hard. Uh, also, second woman to look good with a bodysuit in this pay per view, Rhea. She looks like she, she had she had, she had like uh, purple sort of pants. That she wore them at Clash of the Castle. Yeah. She had sort of purple Judgment Day uh, pants, and she had a black sort of top up here, and she had her hair was looking like who? I can't remember. Beth Phoenix. Ah. Was Michael Cole said on commentary? By the way, shout out to you, Michael Cole. Good job on commentary. <laughs> and she also <laughs> Michael Cole also said when Rhea did actually interfere. Um, we're going to flash for. By the way, this was a good match. This was a great tag team match. Everyone got good action. Finn, AJ, uh, Gallows, Damien. They had a real big cost tag match. It was almost a tornado tag. They were popping in and out. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of aerial moves from Dom, all that kind of stuff. But when Rhea finally got involved, she hadn't been involved in the whole match. She got AJ up into an electric chair, and an electric chair slammed him. And Michael Cole said, someone needs to kick her ass. And I was like, that's... <laughs> all right, Michael. <laughs> Stop inciting violence against women, Michael. Thank you. Michael Cole, that's a bit much. But eventually, someone did turn up to kick your ass, but yeah. not yet. No. Because the Judgment Day win this affair. Yes. I think it was... Yeah, what Rhea does is she does the electric chair on the apron, knocks AJ out, tosses yep. him in the ring, then Finn just does the coup de gras boom, one, two, three, Judgment Day win. Yes. Right. And then they all celebrate in the ring, and the crowd is, is sort of riled up, Boo and Rhea, Rhea's just soaking in the booze because she's amazing. She looks she looked great. Oh, God, love you so much, Rhea. You're fantastic. But in the aftermath of this, the OC are looking for uh, solving for the Rhea problem. How do they get around this woman, Rhea Ripley, this, this nightmare for them, right? They try to enlist someone, but yep. it turns out that someone comes and finds them. Someone offers the solution to them. And it is the returning HBIC... Mia Yim, the Blasian baddie herself, the head baddie in charge, Mia Yim, turns up for after being released from NXT, I believe. Correct. She arrives and she takes out Rhea with a kendo stick that week. And she is now, effectively, the, the Rhea's equaliser. Yes. She's got that sort of... She fits the OC's vibe. She fits the sort of... Um, uh, what would you say the OC's vibe is? It's, it's the club. The club. Yeah, it's kind of... Uh, not quite biker gangy, but well, yeah, kind of biker gangy. Yeah, well, I like that. Gallows and Anderson are. Yeah. Don't know if AJ is. I think Mia is. Mia had <laughs> Mia like the cool is. goggles. Mia had the cool goggles on. Yeah. She had like the vest. She she is kind of biker gangy. But it's just kind of AJ's just kind of there. AJ's just there. Yeah. AJ just comes along. Yeah. It's like I, I don't think Dom fits with the Judgment Day. Well, yeah, it's that whole like. Buddy. I like right. You know what? I've come around on Finn with Judgment Day now. Yeah. He's grown his beard out. He looks a lot tougher. He's. He's changed all his gear up. I quite like Finn Judgment Day now. Dom, I, I don't really... Yeah, as Rhea's flunky, I do quite like him. Yeah. And now he's taking on this kind of annoying little brother aspect. And I like that, how he goes... There was a point where on the on the Raw this Monday where Damien was squaring up to Shelton and Damien's like, you need to back off, Shelton Benjamin. And Dom's like, yeah, yeah, you need to back off, Shelton, yeah. He was like in the back, like Cartman, right? <laughs> he's got that high pitch squeak to his voice because he's a... There's a younger man. He's only 25. It's fine. Yeah. He's the same age as Rhea. How, how is he the same age as Rhea? I can't handle it. <laughs> and Rhea looks so mature, like an Amazon there. Like just a muscled goddess. And there's this little pip, this little man boy, this little pip squeak running around with her. Anyway, tag match was great. Like, love the finish. I'm going to give it an 8.5. Maybe a 9. No, an 8.5. Uh, uh, I'll give it a 7.5 again. 7.5, all right. Yeah. What is the next match, Dorp? So, its next match is similar to the start of the night. We've kicked it off with, uh, with big men. We're, we're kicking it off with some more big men. Bump and meat. Yeah, it's a ret- returning Braun Strowman mm-hmm. against Omos. The Nigerian giant Omos. With no MVP. No, MV- no because MVP, MVP is, can't go there. Can't go to Saudi Arabia because he is a, uh, not, I don't want to say a reformed Muslim, yeah. but a. He doesn't follow that faith anymore. No, he used to be, and now he's not anymore. Yeah, and that is illegal in Saudi Arabia. Yes. Punishable by, I believe, death. Yes. So MVP cannot be there. So he's not there. So he got written out. <laughs> he, he got some power bombs off yeah. Braun on the last SmackDown, and he got written off. Yes. So, so it's, it's just, just Omos. Just Braun and Omos. It's who's going to be the king of the giants. Pretty much. That, this is classic WWE. Yeah, Triple, H, tra- Triple H says he's going to reform WWE. This is the most WWE thing I've seen on this paper yeah. so far. It's two big men... 
with big chests and big muscles. Yes. Bumping meat, right? Exactly. Two huge... Du- Who's going to be the king of the giants, as Brian Alvarez says? He says you've got this giant guy killing dudes, this other giant guy killing dudes. Yeah. When they come together... Who's gonna be the king? Who's gonna be the king of the giant dudes? Right? Take take us through this match. Brief, but take us through the match. It's very brief. Only comes in at seven minutes. And I ain't gonna lie. I remember not disliking. I remember the match being all right. I can't remember much of the match itself. Mm. I remember the match being pretty good. The issue is right. You've got Braun Strowman just come back, who is is normally similar to Brock. Similar thing. You beat him up, you beat him up, you beat him up, maybe hit a suplex, and you hit your power slam. Yeah. And then you got Omos, who is still kind of green. Yes, he's still just beating job guys on Raw yeah. and not saying much. I will say, though, as far as this match goes, Omos this is getting better. Probably one of Omos's better matches, yeah. actually. Omos is getting better. Do you, remember, do you remember the Vince Raws, where they'd have Omos on every show, and he'd be getting established wins over people who were, yeah. who were, who were, who were signed talent? My goodness, he beat Apollo Crews once. Can you imagine that? Yeah, it's, it's essentially Omar starts the match somewhat in control. Pu- sorry, he, w- he was pushed way too early. Sorry. Yes. Uh, but no, Omar starts in control. Yeah. Hits a couple power slams, gets a couple near falls, mm. and it's looking like Omar has got it in the bag, but he hasn't because Strowman then turns around. And yeah. Essentially just demolishes Omar. Yeah, <laughs> Braun Strowman just, <laughs> just takes it all the way around, just does his. Did he do the running power slam? Yes. Gets him with a running power slam, yeah. boom, one, two, three. Braun is the king of the giants. Yeah, then he decides to, to go on Twitter. Yeah. Which he probably shouldn't have done. No. He decides to get on Twitter and, and, and fire a shot at either Meltzer or AEW. Yeah. And say, we don't need no flip. This is control your narrative, Braun Strowman speaking. <laughs> he says, we don't need no flips and tricks and five stars. We're just big men. You then see, he gets absolutely destroyed by yeah. every single wrestler on Twitter. Because if you if you want to... If you want to make a tweet about people doing flips, you need to take the Randy Orton approach, which is make it not sound fully serious. Yes. Because Randy Orton did the same thing, but everyone kind of knew that Randy Orton wasn't being fully serious, and it's Randy Orton, so yeah. it's fine. Whereas Braun Strowman does, yeah, he does sound like a serious Braun doesn't have everyone. the greatest reputation <laughs> no, for, he uh, no. <laughs> for A, keeping his mouth shut, yeah. and, and B, going off on people who we really shouldn't have done. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see you if... you started controlling your narrative, you've got everything to blame. Yeah. Braun's a Roman. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Braun is still... Does, does, does Controlling Nigel still even run? Because Cross uh, isn't there anymore. Cross was I, barely associated with it, despite the fact he was no. a founder. And EC3 is just rocking about. He was on NWA as of recording, like, last time. Oh, we're not talking about NWA. Next match. Yes. So next match is... Yeah, I believe... Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Wikipedia, you're lying to me. There it is. It's for Usos. Oh, versus Usos. Brooks. Da, 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 not Sheamus. The other two. Ones. Butch and Ridge. Butch and Ridge Holland. Now, on the pre-show, they called him Pete Dunne. Yes. They said they called him Pete. I was like, He's, nice. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, since Triple H just took over, he, he pretty much is, because he comes out in retire. And yeah, he off. wears the singlet, he comes out in the... They yeah. call him Butch, but he still wears the Pete Dunne he has, he, has, he has the hat and the coat, but he has takes it off before yeah. he gets to the ring. And he has the, the singlet on, yeah. the British wrestler singlet, the bruiser weight. I believe they still call him the bruiser yeah. weight. And he's got that sort of rabid... Attack, limb snappy, attacky yeah. style, and I like that. Again, another uh, savior of Triple H's bad gimmick rehab. You got a bad gimmick, <laughs> Max du- Dupree, whatever your name was. It was Boom. Max Dupree, yes. L.A. Knight. You got a bad gimmick, Nikki A.S.H. Yeah. Boom, Nikki Cross. Which, as you're speaking of, uh, for this whole pay per view, no man swore. No Mansoir. I was sat there thinking, surely, because Mansoir is at every single Saudi Arabia yeah. event, and he's won at every single one. No Mansoir. No Mansoir. Max, maximum male models. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Not even like a weird advert. Or no, anything. no, no. He's not wearing a fanny pack or no. anything like that. No. No, no Marseille, whatever no Marseille. his name was. Or no Maxine Dupree. Yes. What a bunch of jabronis. <laughs> Back to the match. Yeah. Uh, so it's the Usos versus the Rolling Brute. And again, we mention this every single time. Anyone who's in a match with the Usos is going to be a good match. Banger. Banger after oh, banger. We didn't, we didn't rate Braun Strowman. Oh, did we not? No. I wonder why. 6.5. <laughs> Four. <laughs> okay. Four. Okay. Right, back to the Usos. <laughs> yeah, back to something better. <laughs> um, yeah, it's always a good match. Jimmy and Usos. Jay, they pull out of the bag. They're tag team maestros. Yes. They can make a good tag team match with anybody. Yeah. It's, 
yeah, get anyone in with them, and they're fantastic. And also, fair play for because we know Pete Dunne's fantastic. Yes, Rich Holland, I don't know much about other than this. Up uh, and other than uh, injuring Biggie with a belly to belly on yeah. the outside. Of the other than Braun and Bruce, that's all yes. I've seen in Rich Holland. But this the thing I, I love. Think, I didn't even remember him. I think he was in NXT. I, I think don't he even was. remember him. And they but brought him up with Seamus, no idea. The thing I love about the Braun and Bruce, and this is why most times they're pretty much match of the night, is because they're just aggressive. Yeah, and it fits Pete Dunne so well. Mm. But because again, we see it in this. He's trying to like snap the fingers. He's trying. Yeah, he's to... doing the joint manipulation. Yeah. He's doing all of that. I remember there was a. I'm going to show my age here. Go on there up. was a Tumblr post from like 2017, 2018 <laughs> when NXT UK first started, okay. and someone said, "On I want to see Pete Dunne with Sheamus." I thought like that would be really good, not just as a match, but like maybe as like a tag team. Yep. And I'm like, well, he's with him now. Yeah. And isn't that cool that you can go all around and. The fact he's gone from, well, I think that I don't think Pete Dunne was ever actually in NXT. Oh wait, no, he was. He was. Sorry, he was. He was for a bit. He was on Black and Gold, and then I think he was against Tony D'Angelo. Yeah. On NXT 2.0, and then he went over to SmackDown. Yes. Um, but no, this so match is. Rate this match. I'm going to give it uh, eight. This is a solid match. Eight point yep, five. Solid. Okay, solid tag team match. We know, and the Usos retain. Yes. We are the ones. We, they are the ones. For now. You got to do the finger, Corey. But what if I'm not? What if I'm not feeling it? You're not feeling Usi. What if I'm not feeling it? <gasps> you cannot not feel Usi. But Sammy was getting chants. Sammy was. was getting. So people were chanting for Sammy Zayn. Yes. Who also wasn't there. By who the also way. wasn't there because he's of. Um... <laughs> Do you know? Uh, wait, it says on here somewhere. He's a Canadian. He's of. I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, Sammy Zayn does not participate as he is of Syrian descent. Yes. There you go. <laughs> it's partly what on Wikipedia it says. Syrian descent therefore cannot be in Saudi yes. Arabia. Um, he also just doesn't go for like other ethical reasons. I think like, yeah, of course, other reasons. Normally yeah, he does a lot of charity work with yeah. the Middle East and so on. That doesn't go for. Other um, but no, it's a good match. I, I, I'm team. I'm team J. Are you? Yeah. What? You're not feeling Usi. <laughs> you're not. You're on team J. What? Yeah. What's, what? 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 What does Sammy? What does an innocent boy like Sammy Zayn possibly have to? He's the just... tribal chief wants peace. <laughs> the tribal chief wants peace. <laughs> nah, man. I've got. I've got to stick with J, man. Why are you on J's side? Because I think Jay is the, uh, the underrated member of the Bloodline. He's done so much. I think the member of the Bloodline is Solo Sokoa. Yeah, but he's not done much yet. <laughs> no, and all he said <laughs> in XT was, I don't want to be in the Bloodline. Stop comparing me to the Usos. <laughs> and the first thing they do when they put him on SmackDown is put him in yeah. the Bloodline and put him with the Usos. Yeah, well. Wah, wah. I will say, though, do you reckon Sam Zane's going to win the whole World Cup thing? Maybe. Because he's in it. Do you, reckon that's, do you reckon that's a way of him winning something in the Bloodline? Yeah, it's yeah. Like a belt. <laughs> Isn't a belt, but he's going to win something for yeah. you know, for Canada. Yes. The next match is yeah. the Raw Women's Championship, I believe. Bianca Bailey. It's Bianca Belair and the leader of Damn Control, Bailey. Yes. It's a, it is a last woman standing match, if I'm, beli- if I'm correct. Excellent. You are. How does the match go, Corey? So, I said before this, but I think there's something we're going to disagree on when mm-hmm. it comes to this pay-per-view. And for me... Well, I, I, I was referring to this match. Now, this match is a good match. I'm going to put it out there straight away. It's a really good match. I just don't think it was as good as everyone else was saying. Right. I, I didn't think that was what your issue would be. My, I was going to stop you. I was going to say, did you think Bailey should have won? Well, first off, yes. Well, okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> because, again, this doesn't help damage control. Mm-hmm. But the fact of Bailey's lost, like, twice. Yes, she has lost twice in a row. And damage control have lost once and then got the belts back because of someone else. But anyway, the match itself was what you expect to be. There was like golf carts involved. Golf carts and there was big all boxes sorts of and like, crates, everything. Yeah. The issue was with this is they kept like going for st- spots. It didn't quite work like mm. nearly every single time, which isn't their fault. A little margin of error, I think. But yeah. And. I don't know. I, I just think it's a good match. It's extreme. It's just weapons, yeah. and no one's everyone's getting up. You get the classic like it's nine, and suddenly whoop and back up again. Yeah, yeah. Or they'll grab onto like um, you know, they'll pull them. One thing yeah. I will say is when they're on the ramp, and ba- like I think Bianca hits Bailey with like, the, the door. Yeah. Like, the crowd are in. I did not even realize there was a door there. Oh. Didn't know there was a door there. And she went, whoop! And I thought, okay, that's fair. That's, I like that. Because I did not realise that was Yeah, yeah. But eventually Bianca wins, which is fine. Because... Did Bianca made her own gear for this? Yeah. 
Bianca made her own uh, suit for this. As she normally does. Which is nice, yeah, as she always does. Fours. Golf, yeah. pa- no, golf no, trousers, <laughs> as you once said to me, <laughs> which I found quite hilarious. Yep. Bailey was looking like a... Bailey probably had the best damage control gear, I'd yes. say. Because it was the white and red. I feel like white yep. and red gleams, gleams look better than what white and yellow or white and baby blue yes. that Dakota and Neo were wearing. Again, this is a good match. They're both fantastic wrestlers. So mm-hmm. it's a, they it's are a very solid good, match. Very good wrestlers. It's just one of those things where what happens next... <laughs> Yes, yes. Where does Bailey go, and where does Bianca go? Bailey has been on a bit of a downward spiral recently. Yeah, she's not been herself. I don't know whether she's working through something or, or you know, more power to her. I love Bailey. Well, that's the other but thing because she also, just seems a bit like down yeah. on Raw whenever I see her. She's not like herself. She's changed her hair, which is normally the sign of a changing character. She's changed her hair. She's she's wearing a lot of uh, less color now, and she's going around with this sort of mopey look on her face. Like she's not been able to capture the championship. I don't know whether if it is fantastic character work, yes. Bailey as always. But I just really hope he's all right. She gets out of it somehow. She gets she wins something. It's interesting to see where this goes. But I don't think she'll win the Raw Women's Championship. No, I don't think she will. No, I don't know. We'll we'll find out. Again, I ask you the question: Who is your name for who beats Bianca and when? No idea. No idea. No idea. Okay. It, it, I don't know. Will it come down to WrestleMania? I mean, you asked for this last time, and I said maybe Bailey would get a rematch, and she did, and she lost. And she, it. All right, there we go. <laughs> so totally flashback, <laughs> flashback to then. Yeah. Corey saying it and then being wrong. So I don't, I don't know. Um, Include that in the edit. Bianca's a good champion. Yes, she is. I just feel like this whole feud. Who else is there? Bailey should have probably won. Bailey hasn't won. I just kind of hope now it's a someone Dakota, else. Dakota, EO, they're tag champs. They can't. No. Alexa, maybe when Alexa turns. Maybe. Nikki. Yeah. Who, Who knows? knows? We do that every episode. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you know what my pick? I'm going to put it out right now. Yeah. Rhea, WrestleMania. Okay. Rhea's got it, WrestleMania. I feel like I feel like she may be the one, but it's when, not not how. No, I'm sorry, how, how do I say that? It's when it happens, yes. not if it happens. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. It's a when, not an if. I will give that match a 8. I'm going to give it another 8.5. Okay. And now? The, and now, in the words of Mark Henry... It's time for the main event. Okay. And who is the main event? It's Roman Reigns. The tribal chief. Your tribal chief. The head of the table. My, our tribal chief. Your tribal chief. Our tribal chief. Your tribal chief. No, he's our tribal chief. It's your tribal chief. It's our tribal chief, Corey. No, he's not. We're at the table, <laughs> and he is the head of the table. I don't see him. Where is he? He's not here. <laughs> he's not the head of his table. He's, are you the head of this table? I, I've got, I can mute Wait, you. Does that make me Paul Heyman? I could mute you right now. Or I am, 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 am I Sami Zayn? Don't know. I'm probably more Sami Zayn, to be honest. Realistically, yes. Than Paul Heyman. Really? <laughs> um, yes, I am Sami Zayn. But yeah, it's, it's Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Facing off against Logan Paul. Mm-hmm. For the Who is the table, apparently. Yeah. For he me, says, I am the table. I am the table. Yeah. Uh, for, and he for, didn't know. He could not, not have known. Uh, he could not have known. Did you, did you do you know about this, not controversy, about this happenings? Yeah. The, at the Saudi Arabia press conference... Logan Paul says, he sa- he, li- he does this. He goes, Roman, you might be the head of the table, but in every industry that I ever do, I am the table. Yeah. He looks straight into the he looks straight into the camera when he says it, and everyone goes mad at Matthew at Botchamania, who puts I am the t- he's a regular Botchamania segment is when a table does not break yep. or a table malfunctions, it is I am the table, Correct. and that is the line. Yes. I quote it all the time. Yep. Right. He could not have known that. He could not have not known that because someone interviewed him and said, "Do you know this is from Botchamania?" This and he says he says he's seen them before. He knows what Botchamania is, but he doesn't know about. He just thought he just said. He just thought he did sound cool. Yeah, it doesn't sound cool. It sounds goofy as heck. But you still said it, Logan. You can't not have known. Also, KSI watches Botchamania. Yeah, and KSI has said, "I am the table before." Yes. So he knows. So I can't believe that Logan Paul wouldn't have known. And by the way, yes, it was used in the most recent Botchamania. And it has been used for the past couple of ones since he said it. So, well done, Logan. Good job. I am the table. You talk too much. Yes, it's also a Metallica lyric, which is where it comes from. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's where it originates, because for some reason they thought that's a good lyric to have. Mm. Uh, But no, the match itself is... Now, I don't mind Logan Paul. Logan gets the big entrance. Yes. I don't mind Logan Paul. As a wrestler. That, that was my first question to you. Do you actually think Logan Paul should be here? With The Miz, I, in his debut, I thought he was really good. When he had his second match against The Miz, 
I thought he, for a guy who's not done it before, I thought he was really good. Mm. And I got thought, an athletic background. He did yeah. wrestling in college. And I thought clearly this guy is at least putting in work and putting in effort and mm. doing like kind of like Bad Bunny, where he has the passion. And he's yeah. he's trying his best to do it. Mm. When he was against Roman, it depends. Because part of me is like, okay, it's a bit different. It's not serious. Not everything has to be. Part of me is like, though, Roman's character is kind of serious. So it's a bit weird. Mm. I was, I just kind of thought, he's definitely good enough for it in terms yeah. of the match. I just don't know if it, it that was... That big frog splash, a big frog yeah. splash from the when he was recording it on his phone. He yes. did, they slow-moed that. That looked really good. And it hit him flush. Yeah. They were, he didn't miss. That hit Roman bang on. Yeah, I was I was open for for Logan and for after this match, I'm like, yeah, fair play. I think after this match, fair play. I think if he, if Logan does not come back, he's had a great run. Yeah, in WWE, he's had a great little stint. Yeah. He's had a good run because he was fantastic in this match. He was even down to the when Roman had him in what like, I don't know was it the camel clutch some yeah. kind of STF and he was calling out KSI and Mr yeah. Beast. He was like, come on YouTubers, KSI, Mr Beast, come on, come on my world. And Logan's like, oh, I, oh, I hate you, Logan. Oh. And I was like, oh, that is that is great. Not only heel work by Roman, my goodness, yep. is that great heel work. See, I get calling out KSI considering he's a boxer. Yeah. I don't know why he's calling out Mr Beast. Mr Beast, he's got more money, he's going to buy Roman. <laughs> 24 hours in yeah. the Smackdown ring, who can last it? Yeah. But uh, this, uh, to be fair, it was just a really good match. Mm. It was a solid match. It was. If Logan Paul was a right, if if you'd never heard of Logan Paul before and you thought he was a wrestler, would you believe this match? Yes. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Exactly. You could tell. I could tell my dad, this is Logan Paul. He's a WWE he's a, wrestler. He's a wrestler. Yeah. And he would be like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And that's his and his gimmick is social media man. <laughs> exactly. It's done before. It's been done before. Yeah. He he's. For a guy who's had three matches, mm. uh, he's really, really good. He blew me away with some of the stuff he was pulling out, especially that frog splash, my goodness. Yeah. The the finish of this match is Logan's friends from the Impulsive podcast get jumped. I'm just going to raise this. Get jumped by the Usos. They're at ringside. Yep. The Usos decide to just beat them up for yeah. some reason. And do you look at the, you look, watch the next... Do you see the clip of the next Impulsive podcast? Well, they're all, they're, both of them are in body casts. Yeah. That is so funny. <laughs> and by the way, Logan did... Uh, hurt his, a- he hurt his ACL doing the buckshot lariat yes. which is what CM Punk was injured by as well in AEW yeah. so the books are, if you're not Haman Adam Page don't do you the don't buckshot do it. lariat <laughs> it's clearly the uh, it's, it's, it's clearly the metal lesson to be learned from there yeah So yeah, Logan did manage to pull off the but he, he did the buckshot lariat he just injured his ACL while he did it yes but he managed to do it he managed to complete the rest of the match yeah. which is nice uh, the bloodline beats up Logan's friends yep Putting them in casts, Correct. injuring them. Then who decides to come down to help? Good old uh, Jake Paul. Yeah, coming out, to, coming out to it's every day, bro. Yeah, was everyone's playing. favorite. That was his theme. It was undefeated boxer. Yes, like Jake Paul. Correct. Comes out. Well, the whole gimmick of this match was if Logan has had surgery on his hands. Yeah. And in this surgery, he has had metal pins in his hands, where if he punches you really hard, he can knock you out. Yes. That's the gimmick running into this match. That's the line. And Roman says, "Why should, on a problem on Raw, he says, why should everyone be afraid of Logan Paul knocking me out? Yeah. You should be afraid of me knocking out Logan Paul. Then he hits a big Superman punch on the Miz who was there for some reason <laughs> and knocks him flat to the ground. Yeah. Right? Then he, runs, then he walks off and cuts a mean-ass promo while he's doing it, right? However... During this match, Logan does. He says, "I'm going to land. If I land that one lucky shot on you, Roman, I pin you for the one, two, three. I'll be the new undisputed yes. WWE Universal Champion." Right? He does land that punch twice. Neither gets him though. Neither no. gets Logan. Uh, sorry, Roman. One gets a 2.5 count, and one gets just a regular two count or yeah. something like that. But it's you. It's like the John Cena thing. Remember when John Cena was going to fight Roman at SummerSlam? Yep. And he, he kept making that point of all I need is three seconds, Roman. Yep. All I need is one, two, three, and I've won. And they kept doing that. So every time John Cena would get a two, he'd go, "Oh, I need the three. Every time he'd and sometimes sometimes he'd get a two point five and he'd roll out and he'd look face to face Roman and he goes, three. "Yeah." You know, and that was like, oh, that really, oh, that I love storylines that sort of involve an element of wrestling. 
that move into an element of wrestling almost, yep. like with a submission match, or with even a match where you just put it on its head a bit, where you make it interesting, an aspect of it that's interesting, like, don't get hit with this one punch, if he hits you with one move, if Brock hits you with an F5, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it, it, overall. And also, Roman does it, and Roman retains. Yes, he does. And gets that moment yep. of... of Standing, even though he was always talking down Rogan, yeah. it wasn't a complete squash, even though he was always talking down Logan, he did have that triumphant moment of when yes. Roman did retain the belts. Overall, it was a really solid match. Mm. Um, I'd probably give it another... Uh, I'm going to give it... Nine. I was going to go 8.5. That, I, I'm going to go 8.5. Okay. I'll give it but I, I, will, I, will, I will 100% support your nine. So that is my, All day long. Yeah. Sorry, that is my match of the night. Okay. Like, pay, 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 rating. Great, excellent. <laughs> I've not given anything above an eight point five, so yeah. I am, but I will support a nine. I will not give it an either. I will support a nine. Okay, good. Overall thoughts on the matches of Crown Jewel? Not so much I, the the worldwide controversy, possibly, but I the matches itself. The pay per view was. If this decent. wasn't called Crown Jewel, if it wasn't in Saudi Arabia, it'd be a very good pay per view. Yeah, it's it's a decent pay per view. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. If this good. was like I don't know, not like a backlash, like a. a uh, roadblock or whatever was it called Roadblock yeah. if it was something like that then it, I'd probably think it was better put, but Saudi Arabia just is a massive dark cloud over everything yeah. and I can't really overlook that but the matches themselves very very good They're everyone right. put us on 110% yeah. and I'm very proud of everyone involved now for my weekly rec it's your turn there's always a theme to these weekly recs whenever we do uh WWE pay-per-views and today, we will not break tradition today. This is from NXT 2.0 when okay. it was called it was turned back to NXT recently it got the back to the black and not black and gold but white yeah. and gold yeah. brand of NXT. It's from the October 18th episode of NXT for 2022 which is 4 days after my birthday mind you. So right. this is very close. Uh, this is Roxanne Perez, Do you know Roxanne Perez? I am aware. Formula of Roxy of Ring of Honor. Yep. Trained by Booker T, now Roxanne Perez. In the Pick Your Poison match, she had a match coming up at Halloween Havoc, a wep wild weapons yes. match against Cora Jade. Yep. They did a Pick Your Poison, which is where you have to pick, for, for laymen who don't understand what that is, when two opponents are going to face other, they will pick another opponent for their opponent to face. Yeah. So, Cora, so Roxanne picked Raquel Gonzalez to yep. face Cora, and Cora picked the Judgment Day's Rhea Ripley to face Roxanne. Yes. And this opened the show. I will watch this match live. It is insanely good for a little scrappy baby face versus big powerful heel. Watch it. It's amazing. You can probably find it on YouTube. I've just found one now by Rod Rodrigo XD3. It's about a 10 minute match, but maybe a little bit more with a break. So, yeah, no, it's probably about 12 minutes because I found two parts of six minutes. Yeah. So it's probably about 12 minutes. It's really, really good. Roxanne's always fighting from underneath. Rhea's doing the big moves. And it was, uh, if you don't remember, Rhea got concussed on an episode of Raw by kneeing herself in the face after taking a drop kick. I don't know, in a DDT, sorry. She oversold it and kneeed herself in the face and got a concussion and a tooth injury. But she's all healed up now. She can wrestle now. Good for her. Yep. I'm giving this a 9 out of 10. Nice. A 9 out of 3. Actually, no, I may give it a 9.5. Okay. Because it is just a really, really good women's match. It is absolutely amazing. We know Rhea's basically the best bout machine for the women, and Roxanne is just a prodigy beyond her years. Booker T says it on commentary. Yeah. And Rhea wins the match, pins her with a riptide. So this is uh, just, an, a fan, just a really amazing, fantastic women's match. And Rhea's sort of in-ring return with Judgment Day. There we go. So that is my weekly rec. It is Roxanne Perez versus Rhea Ripley on the NXT episode of October 18th. 2022. So we hope you enjoyed our review of Crown Jewel. We'll see you around right about a month's time for the next pay-per-view, which is Survivor Series War Games. Uh, we hope you enjoyed. It is a goodbye from me, goodbye, and a goodbye from Corey. Goodbye.